welcome to all of you. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, if you're watching us online, we're grateful to have you. Thank you for, for joining us. If you happened on us by accident, this is uh, uh, my Bible class on Sunday mornings at Central Church of Christ in Victoria, Texas. My name is Dan Spaith. I'm one of the elders here. And we are indeed grateful that you decided to, to tune in to us this morning. Uh, guys, it's good, it's good to see everybody. I see y'all back for the day or y'all back for a bit or what? For a few hours. <laughs> well, it's good to it's good to see everyone here. We're going to pray and we're going to get started. We're going to be in First uh, First John is where we're going to be in chapter three. But anyway, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for uh, for the opportunity we have to uh, sit together and study your word. Uh, we pray your blessings upon us that we might learn and we might grow that we might uh, see clearly the things that we need to apply to our lives so that we can be the very best we can be. Father, we ask for courage, and we ask for insight as we as we navigate through the text. Uh, Father, that so many people out there are not uh, don't really care about understanding truth. Father, help us to find what the truth is and then apply it to our lives so that we can be everything that you envision us to be. Thank you, Father, for bringing us here. We pray you be with our with some of our number who are not here this morning, who are who are uh, sick for one reason or another. Uh, we just pray your blessings upon some of our families uh, who are quarantined at home for, for uh, because they've come in contact. And we just pray your blessings upon all of them. Bless us, Father, this morning as we study and especially as we worship this morning, Father, that our worship will go up to you as a sweet aroma. And we thank you so much for the opportunity. And so in the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. What we've learned so far, we're going to be in chapter 3. What we've learned so far is uh, that there is an opportunity for me to know God, okay? And and the knowledge that he talks about is a knowledge that's intimate. Uh, not a just I know who he is, but an intimate knowledge. And he said when that happens, there are certain things that are going to happen to you. First off, you're going to be obedient to him. You're going to listen to what he tells you, and you're going to do what he tells you to do. And then the next thing is, is that you are going to walk like Jesus walked. What we're going to look at, what we're going to look at this morning, is that is that the last one that he talked about that we didn't cover much is uh, that we are uh, that we will, that we will love our brothers. All right, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be in we're gonna be in chapter three and we're gonna start in verse ten. Uh, we looked at this last week and. Uh, what we what we uh, looked at, sorry guys, man, just I lost my train of thought there for a little bit. Uh, if we're obedient to Him, and if we do what He tells us to do, if we uh, if we walk like Jesus walked, the other thing He promises is I will adopt you, and He has adopted me. And what we've looked at, started looking at last week, was what does it look like to be a child of the King. What does that look like? We looked at that I'll have the seed in me. Remember, we looked at, at Luke chapter 8 last week about what kind of soil is my heart and what is, what is going on in my life that may deter me from being the son that I'm supposed to be or the daughter that I'm supposed to be. And uh, we're going to look at the last one he talked about that we didn't get to last week in verse 10. Uh, I want to read, read this text, okay? Uh, we're going to start in verse 10. I'm going to read down for, for a little bit, and then we're going to come back and talk about this. It says in verse 10, this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Now, the first thing he says in verse 10 is, he said, when you know what the right thing is to do, do what the right thing is. Every one of us in this room knows right and wrong. We know, if people in the world, they know what they should be doing. When it comes to whether they're going to do what God tells them or not, that's different because we've got all kinds of people out there saying all kinds of stuff in different, we're going to do this different, we're going to do that different, we're going to look this different, This is, I believe this, I don't believe that. You know, what we got to do is we're going to look at the text and see what the text is. What does the text say? Can I prove what I'm saying, and is it the truth? And if it is, then what am I going to do with it? Am I going to listen, or am I going to be obedient to the truth? Am I going to do what the right thing is to do? If I belong to him, if I'm a child of the king, 
If I know God, then I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do. I'm going to look for the right thing to do. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to wait around for you to tell me. I'm going to do what the right thing is. I want to know what it is. I know when I first became a Christian, for six or eight months before that, I I navigated through the text. I mean, I studied. I I poured over the text because I wanted to know what the right thing was to do. I wanted to know who was lying to me and who wasn't. I wanted to know what I, if I, what I was doing was true and right or if what I was doing was wrong. So I wanted to know. I didn't wait for somebody to tell me. I didn't wait for some preacher to tell me. I didn't listen to no preachers. I just studied, and I poured over the text. I'd never done that before. I never had that done to, with me before. I did it on my own. And, and you know what I found out? I found out that much of the stuff that I was doing was not right. Much of the things that I believed was true was not true. And I was finding things in the text, and I'm looking at it and saying, wait a minute, this is not what I've been taught. Why have I not? Why were we not doing that? What's the problem here? And so, you know, when I looked at, at this verse, it's just exactly where some people, I, I, I've got studies that I'm doing right now, that I'm seeing people for the first time look at the text, and they're going, oh, my gosh. Oh, my. I never saw this before. They're looking at navigating through relationship. They're navigating through their life trying to figure out what to do based on knowledge coming from the world. If you look at the world right now, who's in charge out there? Does it look like God's in charge most places? No, it doesn't. It looks like somebody else calling the shot. you got somebody on the East Coast, somebody on the West Coast, somebody on the, in the North, and somebody in the South, and they're all coming up with the same thing at one time. But folks, we're not that smart. We're not that smart. Somebody's got to be calling the shots. Well, I know who it is. Because God tells us who it is. Satan's the one calling the shot. So many people out there are believing stuff, even in churches. People are believing stuff that's not true because they, because they have people in leadership that don't know what the truth is themselves. So my charge to us today, learn the truth. Find out for yourself. Look for in the book and find out. And when you find it, then do it. That's going to be the sign that you truly are a child of the king. You know, when you, when, and we've, we've used, we use Hannah and, and, and Tyson and them a lot because, you know, it's the ones I know the best. All right? And so... You know, when when they if they're really going to be their children, there's going to be certain parameters they're going to follow, right? Now, you hope so. You hope they'll follow the parameters. They do to a certain extent. Most of the time, they do. But, you know, that's what, in this family, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do what my father tells me. And if I don't, what does he tell me in Hebrews chapter 12? I'm going to get punished. Simple. Hardship is punishment. He is going to punish me if I don't do what I'm told. Because I live in his family. I no longer live in the family out in the world. I live in this family. What are we going to say, Sid? I was just going to say, even if we're God's children, mm -hmm. they're children. They're misbehaving, still love. Mm -hmm. And we'll give them a second opportunity, a third opportunity. Absolutely. Until that's what's strong. And that's, God didn't develop, say, look at the family and say, you know what, I think I'll make a church like this. That's pretty good. I did pretty well down there. That's not what he said. He said, this is how I'm going to make the family based on what I've already done with the church, with the church and the kingdom of God. So he said, I'm going to design the family that way. And so the family's designed after the church, not the other way around. So now I'm in a real relationship with a real father that says, this is what I want you to do. And he said, oh, by the way, love each other. Because if you don't, you're a murderer. And the, and the truth isn't in you. He said, you have to love each other. Now, I want to, I want to go back and I want to look at at, a, at the end of verse 10, he said, and nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister, for this is the message you heard from the beginning, we should love one another. That was the message that they had from the beginning and that Jesus brought from the beginning of his ministry. When, remember when he was asked, what's the greatest command? And, and, and he said, love God with all of your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, remember? And Jesus said, oh, by the way, there's one more that goes with that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Love people. And he said, and he says here, he says, do not be like Cain. What did Cain do? What, what, what does Cain, why does he bring this up? What does Cain do? He murdered his brother. He murdered his brother. Why does he murder his brother? Because he was jealous. Because he was jealous. And it said here, it's because he was evil. Well, he because was evil and his brother's works were righteous. Yeah, his brother was righteous and he, and he wasn't. And when God confronts him, what does he say? What, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, you are. I am my brother's keeper. You know, in the church, I am responsible. Don't look at, the, at us elders and that it's our job. This is your job. This is all of our job. 
to love each other, to be mindful of what is going on in people's lives and say, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of everything I can do to take care of them. Look at what he said. You know, I've got a, I've got a, a couple of texts I want you to, I want you to look at from verse 14. He said, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. I want you to turn back in this book. Turn back to chapter 2. Look at verse 9. You understand the difference between, we, just, we said this before, you understand the difference between light and dark in a spiritual sense. Being in the light means I'm with God. Being in the dark means I'm not. Basically, that's what he's talking about. So if I'm in the light, I'm with God. If I'm in the dark, I'm not. Look at verse 9 and see what verse 9 says, chapter 2. We already looked at this. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in darkness. How simple is that? If you say you're in the light and you hate your brother or sister, you cannot be my disciple. You can't. You mean you're still in the dark. doesn't make any difference how much you say that you're in the light, it's about that this is what the what reality is. If you can't get along with your brothers and sisters here, how in the world are you going to get along with them in heaven? Tell me how that's going to happen. If you can't get along with them here, you know, I mean, should this change the approach that we have to certain people? Absolutely. It should change the way we see them. How do we view them? Do we view them from a from a, a critical point of view or do we view them from a loving point of view? How do we view each other? Sadly, we view them from a critical point of view most of the time. That's what we do. That's not love. You know, and, he said, and, and when he, and can you go back over here? Oh, I got another text. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2, just for a second. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. I should have read this one first, but I'll, I'll connect it together. Chapter 2, verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your sins and transgressions in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit of, who is now at work and those who are disobedient. All of us who also lived uh, among them at one time, gratifying the craving of our flesh and following the desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature of the wrath. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. I should have read that one first because it talks about being dead in my sin. And God is the one that raised me up to bring me into a kingdom of light. Bring me to where he is. And if I'm in that place, I'm going to love you. No matter what. No conditions, I'm going to love you. Right? I'm going to love her. I'm going to love him. I'm going to love him. No matter what. Doesn't mean we're going to go. You think that Tyson loves Hannah? How do you know that Tyson loves Hannah? How do you know? Tyson is three, Hannah's two. Right? Okay? Tyson's his own boy. He he's definitely reminds me of his daddy. Right? All right. But Hannah's, her own girl, she definitely reminds me of my of my son as well. You know? How do you know this? How, how do you... He's always looking out for her. He's very he's okay. affectionate to her. He's always making I mean, he, he'll beat her up too, but... <laughs> That's where I was getting to. That, that's where I was... Do they ever disagree? Oh, yeah. Do they, do they ever not? But, do they st but they still love each other. We're not going to always agree, guys. Sometimes we're going to have differences of opinion. Sometimes you're going to think something, I'm going to think something that's just not right. But we continue to love each other because we're children of His, because we're born into the same family. And so we have to not overlook, but we have to deal with the, the, the differences in our personality, the differences in the way we approach life. And He said, if you don't, He said, you're a murderer and you do not have any light in you. I don't want to be a murderer, guys, do you? I don't want to be a murderer. You know, He, he tells us, you know, and, and when he when he looks at this, he said, anyone in verse 15 who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in them. You know, we can look at chapter 5 of Matthew. I'm not going to go there, but it talks about, you know, loving and, and not being, and if you can't, if, if you hate them, then you, then you kill them in your heart. Remember that text? If you hate a brother and you've already killed him in your heart, that's what he's saying in that text. You know, I, I don't... You know, we say, well, I really like everybody. I just don't necessarily get along with them. Some of the things that I've heard, maybe not some of you say, but some of the things I've heard people say, doesn't sound like just trying to get along to me. Sometimes it sounds like downright hate. And it sounds like doesn't sound like love at all, right? We've seen that before. How many times we've seen that? The gossiping and the backstabbing and the backbiting that people do. You know, it doesn't sound like love. Now, I know this is not, it's not just here. It's everywhere. You know, what I'm trying to get you guys to see and people watching to see is, hey, there is a different kind of attitude that we're supposed to have as Christians as we see each other, okay? You know, 
Sam and I are come from we cut from a different cloth. We just are. Sam's got his white, I've got my, we got, but what, yet we have to come together under the umbrella of God and the, and the righteousness we have, come together under the same blood of Christ with the same spirit living in us and find a way to cohabitate, right? And do it in a way where we can grow the kingdom, not just learn how to put up with each other. That's not love, guys. Two people in a marriage that just learn how to put up with each other, that's not a marriage. That, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not. It's not a marriage. You learn how to deal with each other from their perspective. You learn how to, you know, George has had to learn how to deal with me, with my personality. Not been easy for her. I'm telling you, not been easy for her. Man, it's not easy for me to live with myself sometimes. But it's really not had been easy for her to find a, have, learn how to, to navigate with my personality. She, but she's done a good job of it. She learned. She learned how to do that. And that's what we have to do. I'm going to have to learn how to navigate your personality. You're going to have to learn how to navigate mine. I'm not under any illusion that all of you love me to death. I understand. I, I do. I, I know that, man, I can I can be hard to deal with sometimes. I can. You know? I mean, I try hard not to be like that. I just don't get a handle on it sometimes. Sometimes I'm I'm tough. Sometimes I can be blunt and I can be uh, I can be arrogant and I can be full of myself and my wife, I don't know how she put up with it. She does. But, you know, I mean, but I still, you still have to love me in spite of that. You have to learn how to deal with me. I have to learn how to deal with you. But I don't, if we if we say, I'm never dealing with that person again, I'm done. And then start saying all kinds of negative stuff. That's hate, folks. And he said, that's not love. And he said, now you become a murderer. Now, look at verse 16. He said, this is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. You know, we're going to go over to over there this morning, and we're going to have the opportunity to take of the Lord's Supper. Very, very special time. I think it's the most important thing we do. I really believe it's the most important thing we do. To take that juice and that bread and to remember what happened for us. What he did so long ago. That he was willing to do that. You know, the, the scriptures talk about you know, in John 3, 16, probably the most well-known, probably all of you in this thing knows that text, right? John 3, 16. You see people at football games, or you used to see them at football games, all painted up, hair all different color, and they got this sign, three, six, John 3, 16. And they call them fans. I start talking about Jesus in a grocery store and get caught, I'm, I'm called a fanatic. Okay? But that verse says, for God so loved the world. How much did he love you? How much? How much did he love you? He loved you enough to send his son for you. Not a whole bunch of other folks. Not all kinds of other guys that, that people want to follow. But his son. He loved him enough. He loved us enough to sin. And he loved us enough to do that. You know, I've got three boys. Three sons. Mark, Kevin, and Paul. I love you guys. But I don't know that I could give you any of them for one of you. I'm not sure. You know, that'd be very difficult to do, is to give one of my children up for one of you. You understand? Maybe I'll get to that point someday in my love for you, but at this point right now, I'm not sure. You know, I'm looking at God and I'm saying, gosh, he loved me enough to send his son. And his son loved me enough to come. When he had an out in the garden. Because he has an out, guys. He can, he can walk away from this. He begs for a way out. And the father says no. This is the only, he knows it's the only way. It says in Hebrews that they had it planned from the beginning. From before creation they had it planned. So he knows this is the only way. And because what he says in verse, you want to know what love is? That you give up your life for somebody else. You give up your life for someone else. You know, that's what he did. His, this is how he showed his love. And he said, if anyone has, and, and he said, and this is how he explained it. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? You know, we have opportunities all the time, okay? In this place, there are opportunities all the time to help. Many of you have done that. Many of you, have, you know, when you put your money in the plate on Sunday morning, some of that goes to that. That's what, what happens. You know, people get taken care of here. 
that can't take care of themselves sometimes, that need something more than what they are able to deal with. It's happened in my family on more than one occasion. I know people in here, I'm seeing heads nodding. It's happened in your family on more than one occasion. You know, where, where you needed something that you didn't have the ability to get and somebody stepped up and helped you. I've had that happen in my family on two occasions when it came out of the blue. I'm not talking about a little bit of money. I'm talking about a lot of money. You know, I heard, I felt somebody overheard a conversation between me and one of my sons one day, caught us out in the parking lot and said, if this doesn't come through, you let me know and I'll cut you a check. $10,000. We didn't have to, didn't have to, because what we, what we were looking for came through and it happened and everything was okay. But just the offer of it, just to hear it from a, in a path, that person just walked by us and heard that only part of that conversation. Stopped us out there and said, explain to me what's going on. And I did. He did. And this, and he said, this, this person said, this is what I'll do. You call me and let me know. And I called that individual and said, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, but we're not going to need your help. But I appreciate it because what we were looking for came through. Yeah. One of the things that you mentioned, you, you had hit that nail on the head because if you walk down the whole book, it's talking about light versus darkness. Mm -hmm. It's talking about love. And the other piece that it said is just before uh, verse 9, he said, Beloved, I did not write to you a new commandment, but more so an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the message which you heard. And then you go over and he talks about, I wrote, uh, he talks about, if that which you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father, the promise which he promised him. He himself promised us his eternal life. And then over in chapter 3 where we are, he talks about this is the announcement or this is the message which yep. you heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to describe what does this love look like? Not like Cain. No. Cain did the opposite. No. But yes. like Jesus, like Jesus who gave himself, he died for us. And he says, and oh, by the way, for you, I don't want you to go die for them. I want you to take care of them. I yeah, want I, want to, I want to ask you a question. That, he brought things come to mind. Has that ever happened in your life? Where, where you have seen, experienced the love of God's people firsthand in your life? Because it's really easy to read it and talk about it. It's really easy to say, oh, this is what it looks like. And but when you experience it, it comes. It you know it makes it it makes it pop for you when you experience it. Has that ever happened to you, where you've experienced that? Yes, ma'am. When Sid had a heart attack. When Sid had a heart attack. How explain what what happened? I didn't even I just, know. No, he didn't even know. But I made one phone call. In fact, they kind of asked us, could we leave out of the foyer because there were so many people there. Yeah. Had about fifty people that came and stood in a circle yeah. and prayed. I, I remember I remember us doing that for West Aldis one time. We were there was a whole bunch of men in that room. That room was full, you know, full of men in that room. And we prayed we prayed for you remember that? We prayed for Wes Aldis that that time because he was fixing to have something done. I don't remember what it was, but but you know, and we and uh, and that's the kind of love that people that we're talking about. You know, I, hold on just a minute. I got you know, I want to know how, has that happened to you in your life? Not from a material because he's talking about here material possessions. That's happened in many people's lives. But other things, how does that look? Yes, ma'am. When I was pregnant with our twins the mm -hmm. last month, mm -hmm. I had to be on total bed rest. Had two small children to take care of. Mm -hmm. The ladies from this church came out to our house, somebody different, every mm -hmm. day for one whole month. Yeah. Brought us food, mopped my floors, did my laundry. I mean, you talk about love in action. Yeah. Yeah. Took care of my kids. And, and they did it all. I hope you, you guys that are watching can hear some of this because I'm trying to repeat as much of it as I can. I hope you're, you're this understanding if you're in a in a place where this doesn't happen to you, maybe you need to be in a different place. If this if where you're where you worship this doesn't work like this, maybe there needs to be something changed in the dynamic of your life. Maybe you need to be around people who do care like this, do who do feel this way, who do take care of each other. You know, I mean, I, 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 I know people in here, and I've seen it. You know, what were you gonna say while I go, Sam? I was just gonna say when we were in Norfolk, Virginia, 
all three of our kids were uh, were born away from our you know our family as far as mom and dad mm-hmm. or brothers or sisters. And in Norfolk, we had Esther already. Elijah was getting born, and the people we had counted on to come through and walk her for us when the birth was going to happen, it didn't. It didn't materialize. And I knew who I could count on. I called Brother Samps. I said, Brother Samps, I got to bring her, her over. He said, no problem. Brother Samps and his wife, elder at the downtown Church of Christ in Norfolk, and she, you know, messed all over their place. She was too. She, she had serious issues, and they took care of her all night long. It was the middle of the night, and they took care of her all night and were real sweet to her and gave her breakfast and and she would go run up to them after that all the all the time after. I mean, yeah. she knew them. Yeah. But when you stay with somebody a little bit like that, mm-hmm. now you really know them. And I knew I could count on them in a pinch, and they came through because they were a disaster. I know I've said this before, <laughs> yeah. and, and maybe you get tired of listening to it, but I remember when Cliff died. You know, I made one phone call because I'm, I'm, you know— I've got a dead grandson out there, and I've got police everywhere, and I'm standing there, and I don't, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a deer in the headlights, and uh, and I, and Tim Rampy came over, and said, Dan, what can I do? And I said, call Nita, tell her to call somebody. I don't know what to do. And before I know it, I look around, and there's 50 people from this church, at my shop. There's more people there at my shop than there are police officers, and there, I mean, it's 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 chaotic, and and. And it's a, and one of the one of the reporters there was a reporter there trying to get in somebody's face I don't know who it was, and Tim Rampey walked up to that person and said you need to go away now. And you know I mean you know had our backs and that, I mean I I can never ever repay that the feeling that was to know that I was I was completely supported in a time when my son was absolutely losing his mind. You know my family was coming on court. You know, in, in, in that moment, my family is coming plumb unwound. In a moment, just one moment, everything we'd worked for seemed like it's falling apart. And uh, and it just, it you know, if it had not been for the church, had not been for this church, and the love this church had for my family, you know, I can't even begin. I, I would be here all day trying to tell you the stories that I, that I can tell that happened in the, in the days and weeks and months to come after that. It just—it was amazing. And the police turned away more than the. Yeah, police. people wouldn't couldn't get up there because there was no place to there was no place to park. There were cars parked. If you knew where my shop was, well, there were cars parked up one road, down another road. It was it was unbelievable, you know, to see see that happen. That's what this text is talking about. This text is talking about coming coming to the rescue. You know, I understand it's talking about it's talking about material possessions, but it's so much more than that. The love that we have for each other is so much more than just whether you need 10 bucks for me or not. You know, I know that there are people here that if I need 10 bucks, I can call them, and I don't have to call them. You know, sometimes, you know, you can just you can just look a certain way and then know that there's something that needs to happen. Can't tell you how many times I've had people walk up to me and hand me money in my hand and said, can you give this to so-and-so? I don't want them to know where it came from. You know, I want I want this to be uh, something that they just it just blesses them. Yeah, absolutely. I, so I know things about you guys that many people don't know, but God does know. God knows what we're doing. When you know, when Jesus told him, He says, "My command is this: love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no no one than than this is to lay down one's life for a friend." You know, I don't know, and I I really believe that it's really not the the dying part. It's I will give myself up for you if that's what you need me to do. I will do that. I think. You know, and I'm biased. I think an elder has done that. I think he's given his life up for his fa- for his fellow man. I think that's what he has to do. He can't be successful at this if he does not do that. And I think in some cases, deacons have to do that. I believe this guy has given his life up, not for any kind of monetary gain. He's given his life up for the betterment of this facility. And he does it really well. That one too. He gives it. Because there's times when his life is not his own because of what he has to do when it comes to doing the finances of this church. I'm just telling you, it's not just about you know spending money. It's not just about I'm gonna give you. Sometimes that's easy. I had a I had a an opportunity. I don't know if you know where the turnaround is going underneath underneath 463 over by by Wells Fargo Bank. I was going home and I was going around, and there's two homeless people over there, and a guy in front of me slammed on his brakes right in front of me in that turnaround. 
to give that guy some change. I was not happy because <laughs> I missed him by about that much. But the point is, is, there's a way to do this that works, and there's a way not to do it that doesn't work. Okay? Get, handing somebody $50 sometimes is not the best thing to do for them. It's not the right thing to do for them. You may feel good after, feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but that's not necessarily sometimes the right thing to do. I've told people before, I've told people here. Man, they come in the parking lot, don't give them any money. Send them to one of us. We know how to do this. We know what needs to happen. We know how to do it where they're not going to go down to CBS or they're going to go down somewhere and buy them a bottle or go down on Bottom Street and get a fix. Because many of them, that's what they're going to do. So, you know, when you look at this and you look at our family here, and what we need to do. How do I take care of each other? How do we do that? Sometimes it's just moral support. Sometimes it's just a kind word. Sometimes it's elevating them up from a pit they've fallen into and they can't get out by themselves. Sometimes it is about money. Sometimes when you see someone and if you walk in the foyer, if, you know, if we know each other well enough, and I don't think we do, but if we know each other well enough, you can walk through the foyer sometimes and see through the facade of a happy smile. Okay? Sometimes you can. That happened with me and Cole the other day. You know, I went, we were going to go somewhere, and he said, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. This is what's wrong. And we talked about it. I was okay because I just needed to talk about it. But I, John, L. Can do, John L. will call me and say, is everything okay? Or I can do that with him because we know each other well enough. We need to know each other well enough where we, are, where, where we can go to each other and say, hey, is everything okay? Because something seems amiss to me. And when we don't know each other, how is that going to happen? How will it happen? This is about loving each other, guys. This is a, this is how your God's going to people are going to know that He said it said in a text before that he said the reason they don't know you is because they didn't know God. If they don't know how God loves, then they're not going to understand what you're what you look like when you love each other. This they're going to we're going to look weak, we're going to look inferior, we're going to look meek to them. You know what? Not to God, and I don't care what they think. You know what I care think? I want God to be proud of this place. I want this place to reach out to this community and do the very best it can. And I want the people here to be so connected that people are looking at us and say, I want part of that. I want whatever that is. I want that. Because he said, then they'll know you, have, you are my disciples by the love you have what? For one another. They'll know you're my disciples. We're gonna, we're gonna, they're going to know that we are disciples of his because we love each other deeply from the heart because we help each other we do you know because that stuff you can't keep that stuff you may say well i'm gonna try to keep my right hand from knowing what my left hand's doing when you start helping people within the body you can't keep that quiet people are going to know because people are going to talk about it people will talk about it what i want is i want them talking about it. i want people out there talking about it. i want them to say man those people are unbelievable in what they do because they're gonna they're gonna see you be blessed by somebody from in here and they're gonna find out about it that's how people are going to know that we're disciples. Here, the, the other we side know. of that is you got to be willing to open up your. You got to be able to have those connections because if you don't have those connections, the people aren't going to have any. They're not going to be able to look through a facade. No. If you don't let yourself have connections and, yeah. and relationships. And, and how and how does that happen? Like, nobody came and see me. Nothing happened. Well, you're you're here once a month. Nobody knows you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to be able to let yourself Absolutely. form connections, or, or you're not going to have. Absolutely. Them. And that's what needs to happen here. I think more than anything, I don't think the love part needs to happen. Is forming the connections that we need so that we'll know each other when each other has a problem. Don't expect us to be able to know everything because even we can't know everything that's going on because you guys hide it from us as well. So we, you know, we find out after after the whole the whole thing's blown up and disintegrated, then we find out. Yes, ma'am. Well, and just to piggyback what he said, to also be honest and it's okay to say I can't. Yeah. To let someone help. But say, I was on bed rest too, and it's a lot to say. Yes, can I clean my gun? <laughs> <laughs> I can't real quick wipe down before you come. You know, yeah. or cook meals or just you know, very when, humbling. It is. To it have really somebody is. come in and well, wash your husband's dirty underwear. Man, you know, guys, it's, hey, it's, it's hard to do. It's, it's humbling, humbling from <laughs> any of us to accept help sometimes. I mean, us guys, man, we're machismo, man. You know, we think we can, we, you know, we can do anything, anything we want we can do. We can. Sometimes we, we're, we're, just as, we're just like little babies. That's all we are. We need to understand that, that God has, that, you know, I told a guy one time, I said, let them serve. 
I had to learn the same thing. Mm -hmm. Let them serve. God has called them to serve, and they're going to serve you. Let them come over and clean up your grimy bathroom. Let them serve. Because sometimes God's put them in a position where that's what they need to do. Yes, ma'am. That's what I was going to say. There's times when we think that, oh, well, I don't need that, or I really don't need that help. I don't need that money. I don't need whatever. I can do this. And that may be true, but you may not, it may not be something that is there to bless you at that yeah. point. It's there to it bless may you. be that person that yeah. needs to do yeah. that so that they can be blessed in it. I'm going to end with just one. Just learn, guys, that the charge to us is to love each other. That's the charge, to love each other. Find out how you need to do that. Because the charge is not when you feel like it. Well, this is a good, this is a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. This is a command. This is a command. Love each other. And love each other deeply from the heart. That's what the command is. So we have to learn how to do this. We have to learn ourselves. We're going to learn it from here. This is where you learn it. Get to know the book. Get in the book and find out what God says about this stuff. Find out what he said, what he showed you, and find out what you're supposed to show each other. All right? Guys, if you've been watching, thank you for for joining us. Uh, I hope you've I hope you've been able to learn something from this and apply it to your life. Please, if you have any questions, please call us. Uh, we'd love to uh, we'd love to interact with you. The 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 uh, the the all the information is going to be on the screen for you. Please join us and thank you, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.